Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. I just made some modular Egyptian desert themed terrain and it turned out pretty great. It looks good, it's really modular, it feels good, it's nice and tactile and heavy. It's great for RPGs set in the desert or even various like war games. So overall it's a win, but of course, as usual, uh, it didn't really come together on the first attempt or the first try. So I'm going to share with you in this video what I did that didn't work and got scrapped and how I eventually made this set that I really, really love. Because I don't really have any terrain in this style, my first instinct was to create some basic Egyptian themed tiles, makes sense, right? On which to put some scatter terrain or modular walls. I wanted them to have that look of big limestone blocks that seem to be pretty common in ancient Egyptian buildings. Now, rather than using XPS foam, I grabbed some EVA craft foam and cut big blocks that I placed onto some MDF squares. Really, I should have just made a giant tile out of XPS foam, but sometimes I craft in a way that matches my mood, what I feel like working with, rather than what is actually practical for the given project. And I was in the mood to work this way. You know, sometimes I just feel like placing individual bricks or stones rather than drawing them or carving them on. Again though, it doesn't mean that it's the right course of action for what I'm making. I ended up with some very low profile flat tiles in the end. They were pretty generic, so after doing a little bit of texturing with a rock, I decided to experiment a bit and see if I could give them a nice sandy texture by spraying them down with scenic cement, dusting in sandless grout, and then spraying down again. My hope was that this would create a nice durable texture on top of the craft foam once dry. And you know what? It, uh, it kinda did. Took forever to dry, but eventually I could Mod Podge the tiles and it looked pretty decent. I wanted this system to have modular walls that could be loosely arranged on the boards to set the scene. I've never been one for individual tiles with static walls uh, that wasn't about to change here, so you know I was looking to keep it freeform. I played around with some strips of EVA foam, but realized quickly that if I made walls that thin, uh, it would be a nightmare to try and make them stand up and not just fall over during gameplay. I absolutely hate it when you feel like a little table bump is gonna bring your whole set crashing down. So I switched to playing around with some thicker, you know, walls of XPS. These were just test pieces for layout, you know, they didn't have the full height. I quickly realized that the two tiles I had started making were far too small to work with walls as thick as I'd want. I could make more of the same. Uh, I also thought about maybe making a bunch of half inch thick uh, six by six XPS tiles, just like my basic sets, uh, but you know, in a bigger stone pattern. Still, this didn't quite feel right. And I knew I had to jump over to a different approach. One that's far more in line with how I like to use terrain. I've got a pretty, you know, good looking desert battle mat already. So I figured, you know, some big chunky walls designed to be used with the battle mat would be a far better option. This would give me a lot more flexibility in how they would be used either to create rooms or scatter on an open world battlefield. The big chunkier material would also make it a lot easier to decorate, texture, and damage. So I switched to some very thick foam so that I could make walls that were two inches thick rather than the inch and a half uh, foamular, the pink stuff that I had on hand. Making the walls a full two inches thick would make them not only stand more easily, but it would also make the system work better for layouts on a one inch grid. And I was liking these big beefy wall sections much better. At, at this point, uh, the first full day of work had been entirely scrapped and wasted and I had officially pivoted onto something different. I remembered I had these old metal Egyptian themed minis that were, you know, missing parts. They were just sitting around in a box of random stuff that I was once gifted. I knew that these would be perfect to decorate the walls and create some carved elements that I could never even attempt to etch myself to this level. But I knew I couldn't get away with simply adding these cool minis to blank walls. They needed more oomph, more, you know, like 3D elements. And this was the perfect place to try out these awesome pillar jigs that I got from my friend Gerard at shiftinglands.com. Now these are meant to make all sorts of cool profiled pillars out of foam using a hot wire cutter. Now I had unfortunately not assembled any of them yet, so I had to pick the jig that I wanted to use and glue it together and wait for it to dry before working. It took a while to get a feel for how to use these as you need to get your wire temperature and your speed all kind of dialed in for things to go smoothly. I also found that they got much easier to use when I put in the effort to make my foam blanks the exact right size to fit in nice and snugly in the jigs. Once I had enough made, I went ahead and sliced them into two 
too, so that I could attach them to flat walls. Now, rather than trying to perfectly cut them down the center, I instead set my fence to slightly under half the thickness. This way I could run each side through, leaving a little sliver of scrap in the middle, uh, giving me two half pillars of the exact same thickness. I had to figure out how to lay out the pillars to work best with the amount of minis that I had to decorate these walls, because that was a limited resource. And I wanted the pattern to look good on both the short sections and the longer sections, even when kind of like stacked up or, you know, put in different orientations. After this was determined, I got to work carving the large brick pattern on the walls. With that done, I could glue the pillars into place. Now, these pillars are taller than my walls, which is actually good because I was mostly after that large curved center piece. Uh, that part of the pillar was more appropriate to the look and style I was going for. So I just cut off the top sections. I did did realize that it would look cool to have the tops of the pillars extend past the wall. I could do this by gluing back on some of those cutoffs or by making new pillars and notching them out at the top rather than slicing them in half. Now, this wasn't quite what I was going for here or what I wanted, so I didn't do it, but I took note of it for future projects as adding pieces like this would actually look really great. Feeling very confident with my form factor, flexibility, and the tactile feel of these pieces, I knew I could move on to the coolest part, melting the metal minis into the foam. But before I go crazy with the heat gun, I need to take a second to tell you about my awesome sponsor for this video and the inspiration for this set's theme. Avid viewers of the channel know that one of my favorite partners and favorite mini providers is Arch Villain Games. Through their monthly Patreon, they provide some of the most badass models on the market that you can print at home. These models are generally geared towards tabletop RPGs like Dungeons and Dragons, and even come with 5th edition content to use with the minis. But of course they make awesome proxies for all sorts of war games and skirmish games. Each month brings a wicked new theme, and this month's theme is all about the desert, baby. You get a ton of wicked desert mummy cat Egyptian themed villains here. With a surprisingly unique take and style on what is a pretty well established setting in media. Not only are these models super detailed, uh, not only are they pre-supported, so you can print them easily, but they are mostly freaking huge. I didn't realize when looking at these renders, and you probably don't either, that most of these models are massive, giant, multi-part gargantuan sizes. <laughs> like, they're ridiculous. There's a few 32 millimeter characters, but most of them are just huge, as big as titans or gods. Well, I guess they are gods. If you want some of the coolest printable minis on the market, be sure to check out Arch Villain Games. I'll put a link in the video description so you can check them out and join up for yourself. They are 100% worth every penny and it's an absolute steal what you get for the price you pay. Thanks Arch Villain for providing such cool stuff and for inspiring me over and over again. Now for the fun part. I wanted these minis to be embedded in the foam as if they were carved into it. Thankfully they're metal which means they can withstand a lot of heat. Using some pliers to hold them, I heated them up with my heat gun. And once they were good and hot, I could drop them in place where I wanted them on the wall. This took a bit of trial and error in terms of how long to heat them. If they weren't heated enough, they didn't really go into the foam even when pushed, but if they were overheated, they would sink really, really deep. In general, I found approximately 30 seconds of heating on high was about right, but there's a lot of variables that would change that, you know, like the mass and shape of the miniature. Some had very thick sections that took much longer to heat, but also some of them had very thin parts that couldn't hold a lot of heat before drooping or melting. So there was a lot of guesswork. If I had some sections where it didn't go quite deep enough, I could just carve out a bit more of the foam with a knife. But I did overall find it easier to just try to get the temperature hot enough to melt them right in. And while the heat made them indent into the foam, it didn't actually create any sort of bond. Once the metal was totally cooled, they just popped right out, so they needed to be resecured with some hot glue. I was thinking the stonework looked a little too clean and simple. The pillars needed one more joint cut into them to look more appropriate for this style, and the pieces just needed some real heavy texturing with a rock. But they also needed a lot of damage and wear, so I took a fair bit of time to break away chunks of foam in a way that looked as natural as possible for something crumbling in the desert for centuries. One way to make these broken pieces look a little bit more realistic and seem a little bit more three-dimensional is to break off sections of singular bricks while being sure to preserve the stones around it. 
This is easily done on such a large pattern. I also made some random pillars of different shapes and sizes to act as scatter and to use up some of the extra really elaborate minis I had left on top of them. I made a few different types and they were all weighed down and bottom balanced using heavy duty screws. I love this method because you can just simply screw them into the foam and then they won't easily move around or get tipped over. And painting is where things got a bit crazy. I took them outside to spray prime them. First, I put on a coat of my favorite house brand cheap primer because it's really easy to control and not melt foam. The thing is, I actually did want a little bit of texture foam melting to give it that weathered look. And I wanted it to be more of a sandstone color. So I put on a second coat of GW primer. This stuff is very aggressive on foam and hard to control its melting. So that first coat of primer protected it and allowed me to just get a slight melting effect. Now it did still go too far in some places, but it wasn't too bad in those places I just retextured with a rock. One crappy thing about the spray primer melting technique is that the color doesn't get into all those little holes and gaps. So I had to go back in with some thinned craft paint to you know really brush it over and get in all the nooks and crannies. But after that was dry, the remaining painting was very easy. I simply applied one coat of an oil-based wash and I wanted it to keep the stone looking nice and warm and dry. So I opted to use a wash with no blacks in it and definitely like no greens. I just used some very dark brown and burnt sienna and kept it very light. This would help define all the stone lines and the damage without making them look wet uh, and as if they were, you know, inappropriately placed in like a wet jungle. I was really happy with how these washes came out. I didn't overdo it and the color really enhanced the desert look that I was going for. And since I used oil washes, I could easily remove any excess with a makeup sponge and a bit of white spirits. Now this project started with a full wasted day of making tiles that went nowhere and got scrapped, but I'm not even bothered by that because what I ended up with after going a totally different direction is something that I really love. This chunky freeform terrain is exactly what I like to use. And while they look pretty decent on a battle mat, I do think making a large dungeon craft style play area out of foam to match these would make this set look even better, but that's a project for another day. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making this terrain. If you liked it, hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section below. Share it in your favorite hobby groups. If you aren't already subscribed, make sure to hit the subscribe button and that bell notification. If you've been missing out on recent videos, if they're not popping up in your feed, you're not getting notified, make sure that bell is double click enabled so you don't miss out on any cool videos. If you wanna grab some hobby tools or supplies and you wanna help out the channel in the process, you can do so by doing your Amazon hobby shopping through the links on my essential equipment page on blackmagiccraft.ca. But there's actually an even better way to support the channel if you really love and care for what I do, and that's supporting the channel on Patreon. I'd love to have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. That's it for this video, guys. I will see you again uh, next, next video. Cheers.